I believe that when God really gets a hold of your life in a surrendered way, that he will change the way you see conflict. I derived this insight from verse 10. Then Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, went to the chief priests to betray Jesus to them. They were delighted to hear this and promised to give him money. It's interesting that most of us would see Judas Iscariot, who handed Jesus over to be crucified at the hands of Romans because of the impulse of the Jews to rid the earth of him as an enemy. Most of us would see Judas as an enemy. Isn't it interesting that Jesus chose him as an employee? Why is that? Why would Jesus choose an enemy as an employee? It took me back to something that Moses said to the Israelites when they were coming into the land God had promised them. He said that you're going to drive out all of the nations who live here so you can possess the land. He said, but it won't all happen in the first year, because if all of your enemies went away suddenly, the land would be overgrown because you don't know what to do with it yet. So when God brings you into a place or a promise, he will often leave enemies in the very land where he is settling you because you are not ready yet for the full extent of freedom. And if he removed your enemies, your heart would be filled with pride. The scripture teaches that God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. So God will use your enemies to create humility so that he can be for you what you can't be for yourself. I feel like preaching that, but that's not my message. Maybe another time. It said that Judas was looking for an opportunity to hand Jesus over. And while Judas was looking for an opportunity to hand Jesus over, Jesus was looking for an opportunity to die. It was this purpose he came for. Peter could not understand why Jesus, at the height of his ministry momentum, would go to Jerusalem, the place where they wanted to kill him. In Peter's mind, this would be the end of all of the miracles. In the understanding of Jesus, this was the beginning of the very mission that he came to accomplish. God has a different way of categorizing conflict than you do. So often in my life, I associate God with comfort and the devil with conflict. Watch me preach this, JJ, because we're going to switch columns today and see that sometimes it is the devil who will make your life comfortable so you come to the point that you don't think you need God, and it is God that will allow a conflict that will make you fall down on your knees and ask God for the very grace that enables you to rise. High five your neighbors say, I need a fight. I need a conflict. I need an insecurity. I need a giant. I need a Goliath. I need an enemy. I need a battle. That's the only way I can be blessed if I have a battle to fight. I need discomfort, or else I will become despondent. I feel the Spirit of the Lord in this place. I see you going home and relabeling conflict as opportunity. How dumb would it be if I put down the weights because they got heavy and expected any muscular improvement? And we do it all the time. We run from conflict and pray for blessings. We are running from what we're praying for. How can we receive it? Sometimes we run from relationship to relationship because once it gets past chemistry, we don't know what to do with conflict. Chemistry can make a baby, but in order to raise a child and to have a family, you better know what to do with conflict. So Jesus chose within his very ranks. All of y'all over the age of 60, tell me if I'm telling the truth right now. If you don't learn what to do with conflict, it will follow you and wear a different costume into the next relationship that you ruin because you never learned how to deal with the real conflict, which is within. 
And so when you have walked with Jesus a little while, you understand that Jesus, Judas was on the same payroll as Peter. Jesus called Judas friend and told Peter, get behind me, Satan. Set that up. Set that up. One time when Judas was getting ready to betray Jesus, the gospel writer recorded it this way. He said, what you're going to do? Do it quickly. Let's get this started, because the sooner I die, the sooner I rise. And if I rise, and if I ascend, I can send the Holy Spirit to be your comforter. Let's go ahead and get this over with. Whatever you got to do, do it. Hit me with your best shot. I know one thing. When it's all said and done, there will be glory after this. I am convinced that the sufferings of this present time. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the message, just do two simple things before you go. Click the logo to subscribe to this channel so you won't miss a video. I promise I'll make it worth your while. And second, take a minute and share it with somebody who could use it, or just leave a comment. I love to hear how these videos are impacting you. It means a lot to me. Thanks again for watching.